I'm Jeannie Caldwell, and welcome to In His Presence. We started talking uh, last week about the ways Jesus heals, and I've got a few more ways that we didn't get to, and I want to conclude it today. It's very important that you get a revelation of these ways that He heals. Uh, we started with through your faith, and I gave you scripture on that, through the laying on of hands, through the gifts of healing, and then today we're going to talk about through anointing with oil, through special miracles, through praying for others. Those are some of the ways that He heals, but I'm telling you what, He does do it. We'll be right back after this short break and get started on it. All I could think to say was, get it out of the street. In fact, that was the last thing I remember saying. The next thing I remember was being put into an ambulance on a stretcher. I had absolutely no fear, for I felt God's presence. The doctors wanted to put three rods in my back to support my vertebrae column, but I chose not to have the surgery. I knew in my heart that God would supernaturally take care of me. Learning to Trust God's Faithfulness is a book about Jeannie Caldwell's real-life encounters with God. She shares them with you in the hope that your faith and trust in a loving Heavenly Father will increase. To order the book, Learning to Trust God's Faithfulness, call 1-888-641-3375 or visit our website at vtntv.com. Welcome back. Well, we're going to pick up where we left off last week uh, on the different ways that Jesus heals. It's so wonderful to know that He's got so many things available to us, so many benefits, but we have to grab hold of them. We have to profess them, confess them, get them into our minds and into our spirits and let it flow out of us. Now, we've got the next one uh, is the special miracles of healing special miracles of healing. James 5, 14 and 15 says, Is any sick among you? I think that's interesting. He said, Is any sick among you? I think he thinks we maybe should all be well, but there's always people that need to be prayed for. But he says, If there is, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. He was talking about bringing like handkerchiefs, aprons, things like that, and what they do is they would bring those things, and, oh, you know what, I read the wrong scripture. I'm sorry. I was reading from anointing with oil, so let's just, <laughs> let's just go ahead and talk about that one the anointing with oil, because special miracles is a different uh, topic there. Anointing with oil, we'll just pick up on that one, because that's James 5, 14 and 15, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, pray over him, anointing him with oil, in the name of the Lord. Now, what he was talking about there, he's asking us, like I say, is any sick among you? And if so, uh, the hardest thing, you know, to do for some believers is to read the Word and believe it. Isn't that something? They read the Word, they hear it taught, but they really don't believe it. That's a shame because they miss out on a lot of benefits. That's the reason we even go to church, is to learn the Word and get it into us. And I realize that some things have to be heard over and over and over to get it into us. But once we get it into us, I mean, it's in there. And we can absolutely walk these things out by faith. God gives us the instructions to let the elders of the church come, anoint them with oil, and pray for them. And that, that will cause healing to come, James 5, 14 and 15. Now, the special miracles of healing uh, is the other one, and that's Acts 19, 11 and 12. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, 
and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Now, you know, that is a special miracle of healing. I've seen people bring handkerchiefs and things like that for, for happy to wear on his body. Sometimes there's been so many, they've had to lay them on the steps of the, uh, going up to the platform where he is, and they just lay them there, and uh, he'll lay his hands on them. But if it's not that many, he'll just wear them on his body, and he'll preach. And then afterwards, he gives the handkerchief to the person that brought it. And he said, now just take this home and lay it on your husband, on your child, or whatever, on your wife. And that disease will depart from them. And the evil spirits, it says, went out of them. So it's an evil thing that, that it's Satan is the god of this world. It says in John 10:10, 10, 10, it said, the thief, who is the devil, comes to rob, steal, and kill. But Jesus, Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Praise be to God. Now let's skip down to number six, through praying for others. James 5, 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for the other that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So praise be to God. You can pray for your your brother or your sister, pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Praise be to God. Now, faith, it says, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So your faith is your evidence, your faith in the Word. You show God that you believe His Word. I don't think anything pleases him more than for a child that has not seen him, heard from him in any way, in, you know, in the natural realm, but to read that word and believe it and act on it, it blesses him so much. So we just need to know that uh, you get into that word probably 24-7 <laughs> or just meditate it because sometimes you can't read the word 24 hours of a day but you can meditate it. And another thing is that you must have faith without feeling because sometimes people will come up to be prayed for or have hands laid on them or whatever. And if you lay hands on them and they don't feel something or they don't fall out on the floor or whatever, you know, and they don't have to do any of those things. But if they believe it, it will come to pass. I grant you that it will. I've experienced too many things in my 30 years of walking in this spirit-filled life. I walked in it before, but it hadn't been but until the last 30 years that we've started this church and we've taught it, taught the uncompromising Word. And I'm telling you what, it is powerful. You get it into you and uh, it'll bless you. So we've been taught about the gifts of healing, the laying on of hands, deliverance of, and prayer cloths. But you know, I believe that on going health is a greater miracle. The renewing of our youth, every day God has given us His Word to live by, but if we don't, the result is really harm to us. I think that's so amazing. Of course, I've suffered just as many things as other people have. You know, I've had it hit me right in the face, and I have to find the Scripture if I don't know it and walk it out or whatever. So I've had to endure these things too, and endure inflictions. But you know what? God will deliver you out of them all if you'll just believe Him. Now, in Deuteronomy 5, 16, it tells us to honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you that your days may be prolonged. Well, that's telling you right there, you'll have a long life if you honor your father and mother. That's the first commandment with promise is obedience, obedience to your father and your mother. In Ephesians 6, 1 through 3, there was a death penalty under Jewish law for not honoring their parents. Let's turn there and read that. I think that's interesting. If you don't honor your parents, there is a death penalty involved. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment, with promise that it may be well with thee and thou may live a long life. 
And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, for, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And now let's go to Matthew 15, 4. Matthew 15, 4. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. Jesus said that. Let him die the death. So it doesn't mean that you like what they do or what they say or how they act. You pray for them if they're not born again. But you're to honor them for being your father and being your mother and bringing you into this world. And uh, you honor them, the Word says. And uh, because if you curse them, you're to die, let him die the death. So you don't want to die the death. You want to live and not die. So there must be obedience, really, in many areas. Uh, but it seems very important to uh, learn obedience from God. And obedience begins at childhood, we find out. We begin to learn responsibility to uh, authority. Obedience and respect for our elders and respecting them. It will form a positive or a negative attitude toward those in authority. Boy, you know, and I've seen that. We see, I've seen it over and over around about me. And you don't see the honoring uh, of their elders like we used to when I was growing up. We need to really pray. We really need to pray for our world that we live in, our nation. Attitudes develop at home uh, will determine our attitude toward the police, our officials, teachers, spouses, pastors, and ultimately our God. It can last a lifetime. So when God says the first commandment with promise is to obey your father and mother, he's saying that long life and success will follow and that physical health comes from obedience. What am I saying? I'm saying that your chemical cells in the body literally are altered and changed by an obedient attitude toward one's parents. That's amazing. It's amazing, but it's the truth. The foundation of health is the peace that comes from obedience. Peace comes from obedience. Many times we come to God for healing or, or a miracle, and our heart is set against the ways of God. And we are rebellious against authority. Well, no wonder we cannot receive because there's a block there. We may have a, a, an uncomfortable feeling or a negative feeling toward our pastor or toward uh, someone else in the body of Christ. Uh, resent any uh, curb of our self-will and uh, we don't recognize authority that's even representing God. Submitting to earthly authority first teaches us to submit to God's authority later. You know, that's reasonable. That, that is reasonable. If you grow up in a home where you have no authority, no instructions on life, you can do what you want to when you want to. You're usually a very rebellious child. And you have to be instructed on how, according to the Word, to how to line up to the Word. And when you do, God will bless you for it. Now, when we're first saved, God gives us a little leeway. But He expects us to begin to grow. He expects you to grow. And if a person has been saved a year and still has not changed... He's probably rebellious and disobedient. That's a mouthful, but it's the truth. A lot of us want responsibility, and as we are obedient to the authority in our lives, God will continue to increase our responsibility. That's why God said to obey our parents, and we will have long life and health in our bodies. Medical science has finally realized that what happens in our childhood affects one's, heart, one's health 
throughout a lifetime. Isn't that amazing? So amazing, but it's the truth. And we see it played out every day on television and the papers. We see it. Some researchers say that the physical acceptance represented by hugging is actually a process in the in development of the body. I saw something that I wanted to read. It's called The Healing Power of a Hug. And I wondered why I got it. Well, I can see because that's one of my notes there. The healing power of a hug. It has no movable parts, no batteries to wear out, no periodic checkups, low energy consumption, high energy yield, inflation proof, no monthly payments, no insurance requirements, theft proof, non-taxable, non-polluting, and of course, fully returnable. Hugging is healthy. It relieves tension, combats depression, reduces stress, improves blood circulation. It's invigorating. It's rejuvenating. It elevates self-esteem. It generates goodwill. It has no unpleasant side effects. It's nothing less than a miracle drug. That is the healing power of a hug. I think that is interesting, don't you? I do. Now, let's go to 1 Samuel 15, verse 22. 1 Samuel 15, And Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is a sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Boy, you know, that's a mouthful. But he said, obedience is better than sacrifice. To be obedient is better than sacrifice. God, God was just saying, just obey me. Whatever I tell you to do, obey me. Not what someone else says, but what I say. It's the eternal authority of your life. Now let's go to, uh, well, we don't have to turn there, but John 14, 15 says, Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. Hallelujah. And then Proverbs 4, let's turn to Proverbs 4, uh, 20 through 22. Proverbs 4. I like this this scripture, 20 through uh, 22. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them. And health, or my marginal reference says, medicine to all their flesh. Now, that is a wonderful promise. If you keep his word, if you're obedient to him, health and life you will have by obeying his word. I just think that's wonderful. Now, suppose someone said, I don't want to go to church. I want to do my own thing. Well, long life is not promised to disobedient people. Short life and bad health are not God's curse, but when a person goes against the laws of God, the consequences develop in the form of sickness, disease, and a shortened life. Wow. I don't want a shortened life. I don't want sickness and disease. And I know that Satan is out there rampant, because that's why he's here on this earth, Like it says in John 10, 10, the thief, who is the devil, comes to rob, 
steal, and kill. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life, you might have life, and have it abundantly. That's his blessings. That's what he says he has for us. Now, the rules for divine life are turned upside down. Whether we like it or not, it's God's plan. We need to submit ourselves to God and those he places in authority. We can repent of an attitude of rebellion, ask God to forgive us, and thank him that divine health is flowing through us. We need divine life in our bodies. We need divine thoughts in our mind. We need to instruct ourselves by the power of the Word. Get in the Word. Spend time praying. Spend time seeing what His Word has to say because He does have things to say to us in His Word. And we have to absolutely Look in there and find it and do it in the name of the Lord God. Now, volumes of material have been written about faith, healing, prosperity. But you know, little has been said about the mercy of God. But the mercy of God is out there for us. Little has been understood about His mercy. But God's mercy is a powerful force that can be used by all believers. God has always desired to deal with his people in loving kindness and mercy. Thank God for his mercy. Thank God for his benefits. Thank God for Jesus. I tell you what, I am, I am looking so forward to meeting Jesus and seeing him in heaven seeing my Father God. I'm really looking forward to that day. I think it's going to be a blessed day for all of us that love His coming. And if we go before He comes to get us, we're just even better off, I think. It's a wonderful thing to know that God is for us and He's not against us. You know, I heard Norval Hayes say one time when he was here, he was preaching And he was over in Hawaii where he spends a lot of his time. And he said he was flying in one of those little airplanes. Wasn't wasn't one of the big airplanes, but he was flying from one island to another. And all of a sudden, the engine quit. Something happened, and they were taking a nosedive down into the ocean. And so I'm telling you what, he began, he was praying, and then all of a sudden, he just cried, Mercy, and when he hollered mercy, that Indian engine cranked up and it began to go back up and he, they went to their other island to where they were going. But you know, I've never forgotten that. He cried mercy and God showed him his mercy by saving his life and getting them to the other side. That's a powerful thing to know. You know, in the Old Testament, uh, per instructions, the mercy seat, held their preeminence over everything else when the blood of animals was sprinkled upon the mercy seat for sin God looked down upon the blood and judged by the means of mercy the mercy seat stood as a reminder of the people of his mercy toward us thanks be to God now Webster's dictionary defines mercy as kindness in excess of what may be expected or demanded by fairness, a disposition to forgive, compassion. And the Greek word for mercy is elois, E-L-E-O-S, which means the outward manifestation of compassion. A simple definition of mercy could be an outward manifestation of sympathetic sorrow for someone suffering distress or unhappiness. But compassion and mercy is not pity. These are the words of God. And he does tell us, you don't have pity for someone. And uh, you you should not be in self-pity, wanting people to, you know, feel sorry for you. You're not supposed to do that. 
but that's exactly what a lot of people do. They want self-pity, but God does not want you to have it. He does not want us to have pity or self-pity. We are to absolutely walk in the power of the Almighty God. We find grace and we find mercy linked together in many instances in the Bible. Grace describes God's attitude toward the lawbreaker and rebel. Mercy is his attitude toward those who are in distress or feel sympathy with the misery of another. And I thought, you know, that's really true uh, because mercy and grace are two forces that work together for our good in our relationship and fellowship with God. We as believers are living witnesses of God's mercy, and His mercy is a byproduct of His love. Thanks be to God. He always uh, reaches out to us with His unmerited favor. That's what grace is. It's unmerited favor that He pours out on us. So He, he reaches out, fills our need. Compassion fills, F-E-E-L-S. But now mercy will fill it. F-I-L-L, two different ways to spell and two different meanings totally. It will fill the need. And so what we have to do is uh, have the compassion and have the mercy there to meet that person's need. And it's a wonderful thing. I tell you, God wants us to be ever with whole spirit, soul, and body. By the laying on of hands, through your faith, through the gifts of healing, special miracles of healing, anoint them with oil, and through praying, for others and through your faith. Those are the ways he heals. And let his mercy and his compassion flow out of you and into you that you can be a vessel of honor fit for the master's use. Praise God. I thank you for joining me today. And uh, be sure and join me next time on In His Presence. But until then, always remember, In His Presence is fullness of joy. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us today for In His Presence. You can write Jeannie Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas 72221 or email her at Caldwell at vtntv.com. Join us next time as we meet In His Presence.